Hi everybody, welcome back to the She Rose of History YouTube channel. My name's Naomi and I run the She Rose of History blog, which tells the stories of amazing women from history. So today I'm going to be telling you all about one of those women, an incredible lady called Wilma Rudolph, who became known as the fastest woman on earth. Now, Wilma was born in America, in Nashville, in 1940. She came from an absolutely huge family. I can't quite believe how big her family was. There were 22 children. Um, now, unfortunately, when she was growing up as a little girl, Wilma became very, very poorly. She caught a disease called polio, and it left her unable to use her legs. The doctors told her that she would never walk again. Now, the doctors told her this, but her mum disagreed. And when she was a bit older, Wilma said that the doctors had said she'd never walk again. Her mother told her that she would, and she decided that she would believe her mother. Now, in those days, in many places in America, there was still segregation. So black people and white people had to go to different places. And, and in one example of that, was the hospitals and so when Wilma needed treatment for her condition she had to travel 90 miles to get to the nearest hospital that would treat black people but travel she did with her mum and once there they taught her mum how to massage her legs in a particular way and they hoped that it would help her muscles develop and maybe give her the small chance of walking again someday well, her mother um, decided that, you know, having such a big family, there was a whole team of people that could help Wilma to get better. So she taught all her brothers and sisters how to massage her legs and they would take it in turn after school to come home and massage Wilma's legs and help her develop um, her skills um, so that eventually she'd be able to walk again. Now, remarkably, by the time she was nine, Wilma was walking. She had to have braces on her legs to help her walk. Eventually, the braces came off and she had to have some special shoes to help her walk. But she was up and about. And by the time she was 12, she wasn't just up and about and walking. She was the star player on her school's basketball team. And she was really starting to catch people's attention for her sporting skills. In fact, some special people were watching some of her games and they decided that she would be an amazing runner they started to develop her and train her as a runner and when she was 16 years old she was invited to join the USA Olympic team. She entered her first Olympics and she came back with a bronze medal which I think is just amazing for somebody that was told they would never walk again. But it doesn't end there of course. She had four years until the next Olympics were to be held in 1960 in Rome and during those four years she trained and she trained and she trained until she became so fast at running. Well in 1960 she made world history. She didn't just take one gold, um, gold medal home, she actually took three. So she came first in the 100 metres and she ran that race in 11 seconds flat. Then she came first in the 200 metres and she actually set a new Olympic record. And finally, with her teammates, she came first in the relay. Not only did she set a new Olympic record, she set a new world record. She became the first African-American woman to take three gold medals at the Olympics. And from then on, people started to call her the fastest woman on earth. She became famous all around the world with newspapers writing about her and everyone just amazed at her story of how she'd come from somebody who could not walk to actually taking world records for being a runner. And I really just think that's incredible. Well, when she went back home to America after the Olympics, her town wanted to throw a huge celebration um, to celebrate all that she'd achieved. Unfortunately, though, there was still segregation and they had planned that the event would keep the white people and the black people separate. Well, Wilma was having none of that. And she said she would not go to that event if they were going to keep people segregated. So, of course, they couldn't go ahead for the, with the party without the guest of honour there. So they did um, allow everybody to mix together, enjoy the party all together as one big group. And that was really, really important. It was one of the first places anywhere in America to hold an integrated event where black people and white people could mix together freely. Wilma went on to win lots and lots of awards. She stayed really, really famous for her running skills. And actually, there were even some awards named after her given to other people. Eventually, she retired from sport and she became a teacher so that she could use her life to inspire other young people around her.
Uh, later on in, la in her life, she wrote down all about her story in a book called Wilma, which was turned into a film. And I'm um, sure you can still find that book and that film online if you wanted to find out more about her life and what it was like. Um, and finally, she did appear on an American postage stamp to celebrate her achievements. Uh, so that's the amazing story of Wilma Rudolph. I find it incredibly inspiring, all the things that she overcame in her life to, be to become such a shero in the end. Uh, so please do check out the Sheroes of History blog if you want to find out more amazing stories about women from history like, like Wilma. It's sheroesofhistory.wordpress.com. You can also follow us on Twitter at Shiro's History and you can like us on Facebook and if you like this video there's a couple of others you can watch as well about some other Shiro's of History and please do hit the subscribe button just down there there'll be lots more like this to come thanks so much for watching and I'll see you again soon bye